Do you struggle with the issue known as having a face? Does the mere concept of anyone seeing it make you want to hide in a little cave? Same. So why do artists always paint their faces? Are we crazy? <laughs> This is in fact a portrait of my face. And I know what you're thinking. Prove it. No. Now, there are plenty of examples of well-known portraits throughout history, and especially in times before photography. We don't really know how accurate the paintings are to the artist's actual appearance, but we'll just have to trust them. Although, why not embellish? Who's gonna know? During the Northern Renaissance, which began in the late 15th century, we saw well-known artists such as Durer and Rembrandt using their own faces as a tool to study light and shadows, turning of the form, and the composition of facial features. These artists were seen as trailblazers for the portraiture knowledge we have today, and their best and most convenient tool was likely their very own face. In the Italian Renaissance, we saw da Vinci using his own face as one of his many subjects of his greatly detailed technical sketches. No surprise here. That guy had no qualms about using anything for his thirst for knowledge. And I'm sure he wasn't self-conscious of his looks when he was hanging out with all of the corpses he stole from the ground for knowledge. We even saw Raphael using himself and his artist friends and contemporaries as models for his famous work, The School of Athens, a depiction of famous philosophers of history. This stands out to me since it showcases the fact that a lot of artists, especially illustrators, tend to be reclusive and keep small social circles. A lot of illustrators also need models. Many artists I know and love today use their artist friends or themselves for their published works all the time, sometimes as an homage and sometimes just because that's who was around at the time. It's also really fun to find a new work from an artist you love and realize the model is a different artist you love. So I'd like to think that all the artists of Raphael's time got to see and have a laugh at how they were all depicted. Did they laugh back then? Was it fun? It doesn't seem very fun. While there are certain cultures that have not historically depicted faces in their art, like Islamic art for instance, faces are often seen as the most relatable subject in art, most likely to instill an emotion of some kind since we instinctively see a face and go, that's alive, even when it's not. Have you ever apologized to an inanimate object particularly because it had a face and therefore feelings that you have hurt in some way by bumping into it and must seek forgiveness because you are a good friend to the appliances? Maybe? But yeah, a painting of a face to me seems more relatable than a painting of flowers, which may be beautiful, but they don't have facial expressions, since they don't have faces, and we don't know what the flowers are thinking probably judging us for our ugly face. Anyway, this led to a lot of artists using self-portraiture as a way to express their deeper emotions and thoughts that maybe they didn't know how or felt they were unable to express otherwise. Take Frida Kahlo, for instance, who gave the viewer much more of an insight into her mind and life than was ever able to be depicted in photographs. Rembrandt and Vincent van Gogh depicted their own faces so often that we can see them going through the years and how times in their lives may have affected them based on that time's portrait, giving a bit of insight into their minds. So this brings me to another point. If I'm painting myself however I want, why not just depict myself as idealized a way as possible? You never know if I did or didn't. I'll give you a hint. I don't do that. Because I don't want to do that. I'm sure that's pretty obvious. 
partly because when I use a face for reference, the person's specific quality of features stop mattering and the potential beauty of their face becomes less important than the beauty of the shadow shapes and highlights that make it look like a form that we understand and not only be a face, but an interesting one that we want to look at. The variance of color that makes it look alive and the expression that makes it look relatable. The features themselves don't have to be idealized in order for the painting of said face to be beautiful. And to be honest, I thought this was an incredibly unflattering photo of me. Like most photos. But I thought it would make a really nice painting. Which means, somehow, I quantify these two things differently. And I sort of wonder if other people do too. Like, I'd wager if you saw a really powerful, beautiful painting, it's probably not because you think the subject is hot. Maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe you're vain and disgusting. And I feel like I could get myself into some trouble here with someone thinking I'm saying beautiful people are overrated and boring, but also ugly people need to have interesting lighting and then they'll look real nice. I'm just trying to say that a face is not just a collection of features stacked together all random. Obviously there's some nuance to this, but there is typically a reason for the placement of features that makes a person unique and interesting. I find it a bit sad to have some people try to decide what is and isn't beautiful when we're all different in appearance as well as opinion. The concept of beauty is always changing, so what's the point of stressing yourself out for not looking like the current ideal? Heck, what I look like hasn't been ideal since the 1860s. When I initially started doing self-portraits years ago, I sort of did it to try to get myself to accept the way I look in a way. Seeing someone in a painting just feels more dignified to me for some reason than if it were just a photo. And I know I'm a little biased since I'm literally a painter. I'm not sure if it helped or if I just gave up worrying about my face being potentially hideous to onlookers as I got older. <laughs> wee woo. Wee. Woo. And I know I'm a little biased since I'm literally a painter. I'm not sure if it helped or if I just gave up worrying about my face being potentially hideous to onlookers as I got older. I also wanted to be able to show my painting progress in a more tangible way, paint the same subject every so often and see how I've improved. It just so happened that I picked my own face instead of some other sorry soul. I sometimes don't even register it's me when I'm using it as reference for a painting. I'm just like, ah yes, the model for this, they kind of look like me. Eh, maybe not. I may never know exactly why other artists do and did their own self-portraits, but if they're just trying to own their craft like I am, which I'm assuming is the case, I'd say it isn't out of vanity. To be honest, I don't see many artists being very good at being vain or in the limelight. Most of us are weird little da Vinci type <gasps> hermits who just want people to think we're the personification of our paintings with no tangible form. Ah, uh, to be intangible. Well, that's all. I'm not sure how informative this was over just being another ramble, but I thought it was fun. And yes, I do like this painting. And no, I don't think it makes me egotistical to think that. But look at that tiny little nose. Aww. I've been really enjoying trying to paint pretty small faces. One, because it's useful to learn, but it's also interesting to see how small and non-detailed you can make something while still conveying emotion and information. So that's been fun for me. Thank you for watching. If you like to see more of my art, you can check out my Instagram here, and I'll see you later. Bye.